dull, boring, no passion, sexless. Communication, okay. What do you do when your marriage has become more like a roommate situation? If you found yourself in this situation and you're currently in it, you cannot afford to miss this video. Hey there friends, Ashley Burgess back and on today's video I'm going to give you 10 ways you can turn your marriage around and get the passion, romance, and communication back. I did a previous video on the roommate situation. You can find it right here in the YouTube channel. Uh, I talk about how to know if your marriage has become a roommate situation. And so if you're wondering if it has, you should probably look back at that video. And then if it has, come back to this video. So I will post the link to that in the description below. The first thing that you need to do is to get both of your feet back in the marriage. You can't be stepping out of the marriage and trying to focus on this marriage and save it. It just doesn't work that way. Okay, so if you have one foot out, if you are stepping out of the marriage, if you are spending time with someone else, dating someone else, none of this is going to solve what needs to be done in the current relationship. Okay? And I'm just being brutally honest. Okay? Because what happens here is that when the marriage begins to get the roommate situation going and we begin to lose the passion, when with loss of passion comes loss of sex and usually at that point in time there becomes kind of a stalemate and the communication starts to dwindle many people might look outside of the marriage to have that communication look outside of that marriage to have that sex but unfortunately when we go outside of the marriage our attention goes outside of the marriage as well and we begin to look at someone else as if they can solve all of our problems okay that's not going to happen because what happens here is most marriages, if you don't work at it, become this type of situation, no matter what. So over a period of time, this would just happen again. And by the way, for anybody that is and has stepped out of the marriage and is dealing with a marriage like this, remember this one thing. You're stepping outside of the marriage with somebody else. Even if you divorce your current wife or husband, the person that you've stepped outside of the marriage with is always going to wonder if you're cheating on them, even if you get married to them because you were cheating on your spouse to be with them. Okay, so I'm just putting it this way. It's not going to be pretty. Okay, eventually, even if you got with the other person and that seemed to have worked and you end up getting divorced from your wife or husband, the person you're with is still going to wonder every day if you're being honest and truthful with them. And I don't know if you've ever been in that situation before, but if somebody doesn't trust you, it's not a good relationship. So get both feet back in the marriage and let's begin to work on the marriage, okay? We got to do that because we can't be focusing on somebody else and putting 100% in the marriage. So this is the first thing that has to be done before we can get into the nine other ways that you can turn your marriage around. So I had to hit you between the eyes on the first thing, but now let's go to some of the easier things with some of the things you might not have thought about. The second thing is date night. And I know that we've heard people talk about date night before. It's not a new thing. But instead of the way that I've heard about date night, where they say just go to a date, go on a movie, go to dinner, whatever, my suggestion is go to some of those places that you went to in the beginning of the marriage where you had a lot of fun. Go to those places in the beginning of the marriage where, well, when you left there, the sex was pretty good. I want you to have a little bit of nostalgia when you go into these places and experience it again at this point in time in your life. And I think you're going to have fun. I think you're going to loosen up and have some fun. And it's going to kind of bring you back to a day and time where y'all were kind of experimental, where you were having fun with each other and it wasn't day to day. It wasn't humdrum. It was new and adventurous. And I want you to go back into those places and have some fun and kind of just, you know, loosen up a little bit and begin to just kind of date each other with some fun and not be stuck in the same old, same old routine. The third thing that you're going to want to do is you want to get over the hump and you want to kickstart that sex life. Okay, I know that most of the time in these types of marriage situations, one person wants to have sex and the other person doesn't. Okay, so you got one person that feels like they're not getting attention, the other person's kind of avoiding it, but it's just like anything else. It's just like 
you might be avoiding it, but think about how it is when you're trying to get to the gym and you don't want to go. Eventually, you got to get your ass to the gym, okay? Eventually, you have to go. And so this is what I'm talking about getting over the hump is you've got to jump in head first into this concept of getting back into the sex routine because what happens is you've gotten so far out of it that it feels weird to get back into it. And so one of my suggestions is, is that one person is probably interested in having sex and has been interested in a long time, one person isn't. So the person that really wants the sex needs to get the other person to feel comfortable. Okay, needs to get them maybe a back rub is a good thing to start. You know, not just jumping in with sex, but really kind of foreplay and focusing on that and just kind of spending some time even holding each other, giving each other a hug, even getting naked a little bit and being able to explore each other's body is a big deal. Because remember, we're having to slowly get back into this concept because there's been a lot of time and a lot of water under the bridge since probably the last time you really had sex. And so we really want to slow it in, be romantic, have some foreplay, and the person that's really wanting to have the sex needs to cater to the person that really doesn't to get them to feel supported, to feel love, and if they're having body shaming or whatever, is to really focus on making them feel good and comfortable with getting back into the sex life, feeling good being naked, and participating together. So it might not be about having sex right this second, but it's about really encouraging the foreplay and the touch the communication, and even just that alone will start really pivoting the relationship out of that roommate situation and actually feeling more like a marriage. The fourth thing that you want to do is you want to go on a trip. You want to go on a vacation. You want to leave behind the house. You want to leave behind the responsibilities. Obviously, having somebody else take care of your responsibilities, but you need to get out of that environment. Okay, a lot of times a vacation alone can really spark some sort of romance back. And it can also spark that communication because you're experiencing something together, you're on the road, you're on a journey, you're at a beach, you're at the mountains, you're camping, you're doing something fun that you're experiencing together and getting out of that rut. So planning that trip and really focusing on that will really help you. And that'll also just, you know, have a new experience that's not the same, same thing every time where you come back from work, they come home from work, you cook dinner, you sit on the couch, you watch TV, and you go to bed. We got to end that rut, and this is a great way of doing it, creating that trip that you've wanted to go on. It doesn't have to be a huge expensive trip, but something that gets you out of that rut and allows you all to have some fun and communicate rather than just watching TV and doing the same thing day in and day out. The fifth thing that I want you to do is to learn something new together, okay? When we learn stuff together, we grow together, right? It's when we start doing other different things or we don't want to grow together, that's when we start having that impact of distance between one another. So perhaps maybe you both like to cook. So taking a cooking class, right, could be fun and exciting. Maybe you've always wanted to sail. Taking a sailing class would be a really great thing to do. And a lot of times those sailing class, you know, they, they're on a weekly basis. So it might be eight weeks or 12 weeks or 15 weeks. Maybe flying lessons, okay? So the list goes on on what you can do, but something you both want to do, okay, that's the first thing. Something you both haven't done and something you can do together. And that's really going to impact your marriage. It would impact any relationship because you're learning and you're growing together. The sixth thing that I want you to do is to be kind and attentive to your spouse. When we've lived with somebody for a long period of time, we have a tendency of not being very appreciative and not being very kind. They can see, well, some of the rougher sides of us, and we might not treat them the way that we treat other people. And so I want you to begin to recognize how you're treating your spouse, be aware of the communication style that you're using, and be aware, are you treating your spouse like you would treat a good friend, or are you treating them subpar? Because a lot of times we take it for granted. Okay, they've been there, they're always going to be there, why do we need to do this? They see our worst sides, we wake up cranky, we're cranky, and the list goes on. And so I want you to begin to start treating your spouse like a best friend, like a good friend, how you would treat a good friend and treat them properly, because when we take them for granted, we're also taking the entire relationship and all those years for granted as well. 
The seventh thing that I want you to do is to surprise your spouse. Everybody loves surprises, you know? I mean, no matter how big or how small, it's all about the thought that you put into it. And so when you surprise somebody, it means that you actually thought about them. You took time to think about them, you know, whether it's stopping by their work or sending flowers or making them a surprise dinner at home that they weren't expecting or a surprise trip. Either way, it, it makes them realize that you care and that you're thinking about them. And that can go a long way to really, you know, pulling y'all's relationship back together. You know, just like being kind and attentive, this is a big deal because when we're thinking about somebody and we're being supportive of them, we want them to be happy and have experiences. And so this is just, it's just a fun thing to do too. And it's also something you would do for somebody you really care about. And so we really need to put that care back in this relationship. Because remember when you were dating and you had just gotten married, Remember how many surprises you gave your significant other? Well, let's get back into that and start living that way because we can't expect a relation to keep evolving and to grow and to be passionate if we're not putting any growth or being passionate into it. So we have to put stuff into it that we want to get out of it. So think about that. Create those small or big surprises because it'll really go a long way to them understanding how much you care and how much thought you put into it. The eighth thing that I want you to do is work at it every single day. It's like anything else in life, okay? A marriage is something you have to work at. And when we work at it, I mean being attentive, being appreciative, checking our mood, checking our responses to our spouse, not taking them for granted, doing the small things that go a long way. Those are the things that we have to do on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? And actually respect them and show them respect and realize when we're being bossy, all these little things go a long way. And so we got to work on it on a daily basis to make it work and to really encourage the best out of our spouse and encourage the best out of our marriage. The ninth thing that I'd like you to do is to realize when you are taking your life and marriage for granted. Like I was saying earlier, we have to be aware of that, but we have to realize when we're doing it. Um, because if we're not realizing when we're doing it, we're not going to be able to change it. So if we're responding to our spouse in a certain way, if when we get home we're on the phone constantly or we're constantly texting or we're not really listening to what they have to say, all these things we need to become aware of. Would you treat your friend like that? Would you respond to a friend like that, okay? And I want you to think about that because a lot of times our spouse sees the absolute worst in us. They see the side that most people don't see. And I want you to ask yourself, is that the side that you want your spouse to see? Is that the side? And I want you to start kind of cleaning up your act on this, okay? And I think everybody needs to do this that's married to some degree, is cleaning up that act, not taking things for granted, and actually realizing that this is not going to be here forever. Eventually, this isn't going to be forever. We all pass on. Okay, and I don't want you to have a bunch of regret that you didn't treat your spouse well or you didn't enjoy your marriage or you didn't get the most out of it. I don't want you to have that regret. I want you to feel very happy and healthy and hopeful about what you had instead of looking at it from the glass half empty saying, I wish I would have done this. And so really think about that. What are the things that you can change right now? Is it getting off the phone when you get home? Is it paying more attention to your spouse? Is it actually listening to what your spouse is saying and actually finding things that you can both do, that you both like to do, that you can come together on? All these things are powerful. They're not that big. It's not that hard to do, but it's being consistent and being able to be honest about yourself and looking at your own self and saying, what are the things that I can change? What are the things that I can do? to encourage a better marriage and to add this love and support into this marriage that we had at one time that just needs to be more fortified now. And last but not least, very similar to our first step, remember, jumping into a new relationship is not going to solve the problem in the current relationship, okay? And so I want you to really think about that. I know that some people might seem more interesting. You might meet somebody that seems to light your fire, but remember, until we figure out what's up with our marriage, we cannot move on, okay? So jumping into a new relationship because you don't feel like the marriage is working is not the answer. Trying to work through it, trying to see if you can bring it back, see if you can work together. And if both people are willing to work together and take responsibility, you can go really far. You know, I hear a lot of times in therapy and coaching, you know, people talking about, you know, my marriage has lost that passion 
or we seem to not be able to communicate as effectively as we have and that bothers me and that hurts my feelings and I totally understand what you're going through okay but in order to really try to rectify that both people have to be self-aware okay and so if you're dealing with a marriage who both people are self-aware that's great and if you're both willing to work at this very powerful stuff I mean the only times that I see when marriages don't work is when one person refuses to take responsibility refuses to be self-aware and doesn't want to take responsibility for their actions and if you're in a situation like that you need to exhaust all opportunity because of many things. One, you got into the sanctity of marriage. Two, I know that the marriage is important to you, but I also want you to realize if you are frustrated in that situation, trying to do these steps is powerful. Working through that will be good and therapeutic. And if you still don't seem to get something out of that, it also helps you to alleviate the, the anxiety, but also, you know, the worry that you might have if you didn't. I, because, you know, one of the things that I've realized is that every relationship, especially a marriage, if we've gone to this much trouble, we've gotten married, we stayed together that long, there's a reason behind it. We need to figure out the relationship. We need to work at it. We need to cultivate it. And if it cannot be saved, we have to exhaust all options so that we don't feel regret. Because regret is not a, not a good thing. It's something that breaks us down, makes us feel bad, and it makes us question if we did everything possible that we could do. And so I want you to be able to exhaust these opportunities and hopefully these will work and you'll come together, you'll have more passion, you'll have more connectivity and more communication in your marriage. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and leave us a like if you like this video. In the comment section below, I'd love to read some questions about this topic. Do you have questions on things that I didn't cover in this video? And I will respond back to your questions directly. Also, please share this video with friends, family, neighbors, anybody that you think needs to watch this to help them with their marriage and to turn that marriage around. Because a marriage that has gone into a roommate situation can be saved, and it can be saved by using these 10 techniques to revive it and to gain back that passion and that communication and the romance. Don't forget to live your true life.